Okay, looks like I'm live. Um, love that. Sorry, the counter wasn't working. Um, I'm Ashley Terrell. I don't normally do live streams. Last time I did a live stream, I was actually in Hawaii, but on Maui instead of Oahu, and I was also in high school, and now I'm in college. So, a fun change up. The point of this live stream is we're going to get ready together. We're going to talk. I clearly don't have makeup on. I just got out of the shower and I look like a little mole rat. And in the description box, there is a link to my dance marathon page. On that page, you can donate money and it goes towards the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Um, something that a lot of college campuses do. Oh, also, I am drinking my protein shake. by Gainful and it doesn't taste that fabulous, but it's protein and it's like vegan and it's hard to find formulas like that. Anyway, so time to get ready. So yeah, something that a lot of different college campuses do is a dance marathon um, through dance marathon, like that's what it's called. We In Hawaii, we call ours Aloha-thon for other reasons. And it's just like a chill time so far. I don't know. I've never done Aloha-thon before and as like a participant or anything. And then my friend Haley FaceTimed me one day when I was tanning at the beach and said, hey, there's a position called morale director that you would be perfect for. Do you want to do that for Aloha Thon? I'm president. I'm forcing you to interview. So I am now on the exec board um, <laughs> for an event I've never been a part of. God. Okay, so I just put on a primer. I'm also going to do a setting spray. Just because I do got to get to class in less than an hour. And I find that setting sprays really do help my makeup just stay on longer. However, I find that if I apply a setting spray after I do eyeshadow, that makes it crease. Oh my god. Open. This is my mirror I have right now. Because my other mirror, um, I didn't have Windex all summer, so I never cleaned it. This is some medieval torture stuff right here, this eyelash curler. Anyways. So yeah, the point of the stream, bring awareness and use the link in the description box, put some money towards Aloha-thon. Again, it goes to the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. And here in Hawaii, we work with Kapiolani like Medical Center. Oh, I love curling my eyelashes because I am half Asian. And so I have uh, short, eyelashes that literally grow down like bangs over my eyes and so whatever i can do to lift them up to jesus i will fun fact about my page for aloha -thon. i have incentives that depending on the amount you donate you get a certain like prize or reward so for five dollars shout out my next video obviously not the one that's coming out thursday but next week's video, you'd get a shout out in. I think for like 15 or something, I said I would use my air cannon um, on my roommate and you'd get the video of that. <laughs> um, they do not know that I am involving them in my lives, but so it's even a better video. It's a surprise. And then, oh, never mind. That's the notification I don't care about. And then for, I think like after a certain amount, you can just send in request for an incentive at that point. Just send in whatever you want. I've already raised over $100 to be fair. 60 of that was from me because of registration costs. I also do not know if the link is working right now to donate because when I tried to check this morning, it was all broken and nothing was loading. Fun fact, when I first started curling my eyelashes, I didn't realize you had to curl them into like a C 
And so I just curled them like, I don't even know, like an L shape. It was just like the worst bent shape ever. Oh my God. Wait, drink up, Rosie. I've been drinking protein shakes this summer and they haven't gotten any easier. Done. So here's what I got going on today. I have class in an hour. It's my business 312 class, and it's my only class that I have in person. So I, I don't know. Even though it's an in-person class, it does not need to be in person. I have a friend who's taking weightlifting, and that's online. That's not in person. My class does not need to be in person. It is a lecture with like maybe like 15 of us, and we literally just like come to class and then he tells us about the textbook like chapter and then we leave. And so that's my one in-person class. It's also just kind of weird because it's like principles of marketing and we're in all the boring stuff right now. Literally our last week is digital marketing, which is like the only thing I have experience of knowing about. And I have to wait till the end to like do that. Damn. So, yeah, we're still talking about like SWOT, which is like super basic if you know anything about business. It's strength, weakness, opportunities, threats. Um, you know how basic it is? My business 200 professor didn't let us really use that after the first like two months of the semester because he was like, you guys should be more advanced than this. So, yeah, we stopped using like SWOT and Pastel after the first couple months because he was like, you like, this is just like a template. You should be able to do other things. Honestly, Business 200 was my favorite class that I ever took at UH Manoa so far. Um, it was not my favorite because of the lack of work. We had so much work. But it was definitely one of my favorites because of how much I learned. And uh, it was mostly because of my professor. Other students I knew that were direct admit like program students that also had to take Business 200. They had a different professor and they that class, it was like enjoyable for them. Business 200 for me with my professor was not enjoyable, but that's because he was just so like tough and he is the marketing capstone teacher. So, and he also is like the supervisor of one of the more exclusive business clubs um, on campus. It's like one of the only ones that you need to like actually like audition for and send in a headshot. And then they do like case competitions, but like, yeah, he was just super tough and had so much real life experience and it was very fun to talk to him. He also had a million and one degrees. His LinkedIn was insane. Oh, this is something new I've been trying. Do you see how that mascara is brown? I never wear brown mascara. However, I've been trying the black brown mascara and okay, I'm going to be honest. In the past like three days, I've been wearing black brown mascara, so just black mascara. My eyelashes do kind of blend in more to my whole look and don't really stand out. But isn't that like what we need for like every day? Oh my God. I just got mascara all over my piece, Lily. No, oh my God. And like, not just a leaf on my piece, Lily. It's like my actual flower. Do you guys see that brown on my little <laughs> bloom? Damn it, Ashley. Comment from John. Do you think the UHA Business School, which is me, Scheidler, um, and the entire school as a whole is worth it? Honestly, John, shout out to Brazil. Usually about 98% of my viewers are from the US. But so I am a direct admit student at the Scheidler Business School. Scheidler, if you double major with international business, it is 100% worth it. International business is the like biggest thing that Shidler is known for. And we usually rank within top 20, like globally, 
of international business programs. A big reason on why Shidler is good for IB or international business is because of its location. Um, we have like partnering like business schools in Japan. So it's like really easy to like get a study abroad, like internship. Um, and the future of business is in Asia. So the fact that you're in Hawaii, which is hella close to Asia, <laughs> makes like it you see how so much of like Asian culture is influenced into our curriculum at Shidler. So I think that Shidler Business School is worth it. Honestly, every student you meet at like UH is in like a either is a business student or is a marine bio student just because Hawaii is most known for that. But yeah, my tutor was like, you cannot go to Hawaii. You're going to slack off unless you do like the honors program and if you like do business. So yeah, if you are a senior in high school, John, and you are applying to UH, and if you're trying to get into the DAP, which stands for Direct Admit Program, um, I didn't find out I got into it until about March, and I had gotten accepted to the school around Halloween that same year. There's no, as far as I'm concerned, there's no other application. You just put down that you want to be exploratory business. And then based on like, they accept around 80 freshmen a year. But based on that, then they choose who's direct admit and who is going to stay exploratory major and then reapplies again as a sophomore. The business school, I got some fun facts about it. Fun fact, Shidler Business School is not always named Shidler. But Jay Shidler, a former alum, just donated so much money that they decided to rename the school for him. And Jay Shidler is so just like much of a one-upper that he actually hires a separate landscaping crew, or, uh, crew from the school to make sure that Shidler always looks neater and more like kept up than the rest of UH. <laughs> Fun fact about Shidler that I learned during orientation um, as an orientation leader. I didn't learn this as a freshman. Fun fact, I was an orientation leader this past summer for new students. But um, something I learned was that Shidler has quite a bit of funding just because it is a big part of UH that they're able to pay some of their like staff a lot of money one of my professors was actually offered another job at like Penn, <laughs> but because they, Shiler was able to like, um, like raise the amount of like salary that he was gonna get compared to Penn, he ended up coming here. So I was like, oh my God, I have like a professor who's like, was about to teach at this really cool other business school, but is instead here in Hawaii because Shiler just has so much money to hire these great people. So yes, business, at UH, 100% worth it. The class I have is maybe not as worth it, or maybe it would be more worth it if like I interacted more, but it's hard to interact in a lecture. Um, but yeah, okay, mascara, done. Do we notice the difference with my mascara? I get recognized on campus whenever I have makeup on, but I do not get recognized on campus to and from my walk to the gym. No one ever says hi because I look like a sweaty mess, except for one girl, because she recognized me like the previous week with makeup on, and I recognize her. She's from Canada. Um, let's see. What's next in my routine? Concealer. So I got some pimps that are popping, which means you got to conceal them. Oof. Under eyes. Oh my god, how did I get mascara under here? Okay, we'll just cover that up with concealer. This concealer is, this used to be like a shade I could contour with, but since living in Hawaii, I'm just tan now and it's almost too light for me. And then I have a ton of discoloration around my chin and mouth. So concealer goes there. I use a dry sponge because I find a wet sponge absorbs too much products. Back in high school, I actually used to make like videos like this where I talk to a camera and put on my makeup. And I thought that I knew so much about makeup. 
And then I took AP Chem and I realized I know nothing about the molecular status of makeup. Oh my God. Oof. So I've never been recognized in my business classes so far and I have a theory why. So because I am direct admit, I did start taking business classes um, two years before most other students do. And so no one there is my age. Like everyone there is a year or two older than me. And they all ask me, how'd you get into this class as a second year? And I was like, oh, it's direct admit. Anyways, so obviously they're not the demographic that's watching my videos. A lot of people who watch my videos are people in high school that are looking at colleges that they're interested in, or they're like freshmen who have watched me in the past. Okay, not to sound pretentious, but I do like getting recognized because usually like only my grandma watches my videos. And so the fact that people come up to me on campus, first off, the fact that people have the bravery and courage to come up to me on campus, because I often look really like pissed off just because I'm like sweating, like two rats humping in a wool sock. But people like come up to me and they're like, oh my God, are you Ashley? One girl yesterday, I was having a really bad day because Sunday night was not a good night for me. Now, and so, but yeah, this girl came up to me and she was like, are you Ashley? And I was like, yes. And she's like, I watch your videos. You're like part of the reason why I chose to come here. And I was like, oh my God, girl, let me get your Instagram. <laughs> Hi, Sky. Fun fact. Sky is one of the students that I was an orientation leader. <laughs> Sky, honestly, with online classes, and if you have a check account, it's easy to catch up. And even then, someone else always has a check account. Oh my God. I need to hurry up. So I'm going to make it to my class, though. Something I did this summer because Andrew, who I'm no longer with, <laughs> that's so funny to say to me, uh, said that. Uh, whenever I switched up my makeup routine, he did very much notice. And so he did notice when I switched from using foundation to just concealer, which was like kind of fun. Because before he was all like, oh, I never really noticed if you have makeup on or not. It's like, yes, you can. And then he did kind of notice like, oh, I really like whatever you did today. And so this is my no foundation look. I'm just wearing concealer, some cream blush, and then we'll see what else we have from there. This is the only arm workout I do besides um, curling my hair. Cause honestly that takes a lot of strength. Why isn't my phone working? Oh my God, my phone doesn't work in many, many ways. So <laughs> um, I was at Cromwell's, which is one of my favorite party beaches. Everyone here likes Alan Davis for party beaches. However, Alan Davis is such a hike. I like you cannot like get to the bathroom in time before you gotta pee at Allen Davis. And so Cromwell's is my go-to party beach. And it's like close to campus where it's like a cheap Uber. And it's just like, I think it's kind of great. Now, oh my God, Canyon! Hi, Canyon! Oh my God. Katie is so from my hometown, Pleasanton, and he literally lives on my street. Okay, wait, I don't want to give out too much private information about Canyon, but hi, Canyon. You should still be in class. It, it is a three hour time difference, but you should still be in class. Um, we're also talking about Cromwell. So yeah, Cromwell's is my go-to party beach. And I was there last week taking pictures. Actually, it was the most recent picture on my Instagram. And Let's see. Yeah, so the tide doesn't usually get high until about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was there at one and it was high. Oh my God. I was like, where's the sand? And this, I'm like, there is no sand. Everything is just like <laughs> under the water here. And so my phone was in my back pocket. So I was walking and it definitely got a little wet. So yeah, the charging port doesn't work on my phone. So I've just been using the wireless charger, which is like slower than the actual like charging port, but 
the charging cord obviously doesn't work. And I've tried this with different cables, different outlets, using my car, doesn't work. So we gave up on that. Um, next in my routine, powder. So I get so oily. And so I use powder. The powder I've been using is a Sephora brand and it's a loose powder because I find that loose powder is just economically better. If you are a college student and if you're broke on stuff, switch from pressed powder to loose powder. I find that it takes me forever to go through loose powder, um, but I go through pressed powder so fast. And honestly, they both do the same job, which is making me look prettier. Oh, so yeah, I'm just like pressing that in with a different sponge. I got three different sponges that I use for three different things and that's bougie. <laughs> Even like places where I didn't necessarily put product on, but just want to put some powder on top, I'll do that. Ooh, Canyon, I'm glad you're in school. And I hope you heard the news. Olivia finally got her permit. But she doesn't have her first like driving lesson for a while, so she's not going to be like getting her license anytime soon. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, just hitting up kind of the T-Sun area. Love that. And then that's it for powder. I used to use a lot more powder. I used to cake that on. And by used to, I meant beginning of summer. Like this is very recent, but I switched it up since. Other things that are happening today. So yes, I have my in-person lecture in 40 minutes. And I, afterwards, I told Andrew, like FaceTime me today. We've agreed to that. And we have Legos. Let me go grab the Legos. I get so excited. So yeah, we each have a Harry Potter Lego set. This is the Polyjuice Potion mistake. And we're supposed to build them together today over FaceTime. Um, we only built one Lego set when we were in person over summer together, which was also Harry Potter. And I just wanted to keep that going between us, um, even like when we're just in this like kind of for me, it's an in-between phase, like, phase. I think that we're kind of friends, but we still say I love you. And I think he's kind of, like, really getting over that hump of, you know, we're not together. <laughs> Man. Actually, one of Canyon's friends, and also my friend, Claire, she was, like, in the beginning of summer, like, oh, are you and Andrew dating? And I said no, because we weren't. And then, like, two days later, I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask him we're going to be dating. We're going to be exclusive. And then she was like telling my sister, like, Ashley just posted, I love you, Andrew, on her Instagram story. I thought they weren't dating. <laughs> love that. Confusing this for me. Hi, Erica. I hope you're doing great today. This protein shake is really just like tweaking me right now. I drank all of it and I'm feeling the energy now. So oof, got to do brows. My favorite thing about being half Asian is my lack of eyebrows. So gotta do that. Oh my God. My legit actual favorite thing about being like Hapa, they call it out here, but I said Asian back home, um, is like people often confuse me with someone who is from Ireland just based on like how I look. And honestly, that's my favorite thing about living in Hawaii is that there are people who look like me and such a good like Asian community, there was no culture shock for me from California to here. I was considering about going to Baylor, which is in Waco, Texas. There is no boba in Waco, Texas. You know how much of a culture shock that would have been for me? I mean, I would have brought the diversity up from 1% to 2% at Baylor, I think. But I also probably could have found a cowboy instead of just falling in love with a finance major who goes to Pennsylvania. Oh my God, that's a question I get asked daily, just like um, here or in real life or on Instagram is, where did Andrew go? So Andrew was only in Hawaii for the summer because he was taking gen eds as part of Hawaii's outreach program. He was already enrolled as a full-time student at Penn State and so, yeah, he was just here for the summer. And, of course, he had to go back for beginning of the school year. 
So yeah, that's where he is and that's where he'll be for a very, very long time. Yeah, it's always so interesting when I tell people, oh, I'm not really seeing anyone right now, um, which is true. I'm not really talking to anyone except for Andrew. And that's kind of delusional and very one-sided for me. <laughs> but, um, and they're like, oh, what happened to like that man you had over summer? And I have to explain the whole situation. Okay. Brows are okay. This one needs a little bit more work and we're gonna put in that work. It's not like I'm trying to really impress anyone in this in-person class. There's not anyone like super cute. And I'm also not ready for that. Just in case, you know, something happens else with someone else whose name I've been mentioning a lot of times. Oh my God, do we just give up on this brow? Oof. So I live in Freer Hall at the UH Manoa, which is our newest storm. And it's the only one with AC, except fun fact, my AC doesn't work. <laughs> the generator for like my floor and a couple of the other floors ACs do not work right now. And our school has been hit really hard with the pandemic since Hawaii's main income is tour like tourism and so we just like we can't afford to like fix that generator right now and so a lot of people have been putting in requests to get a portable ac unit that like instead of a wall unit it's like a window unit and some of those requests are getting filled some of them aren't just because of like lack of supplies but yeah, honestly, I lived in Holly Lokalani, which has no AC. And I lived in that during summer, which isn't as bad as August and September heat in Hawaii, but still is bad. And I had a south facing window. So like I got sun all day here. I have a north facing window, so it's pretty cool um, just because I never see the sun. <laughs> so, yeah, it is. Honestly, I had a bigger struggle this summer with heat than I do right now. So I've been chilling without AC. I know that like fear is expensive because you're either paying to have an individual dorm or to have AC. And yeah, I'm paying to not have AC, I guess. So right now I'm just hitting up my big ass five head with bronzer. I call it a five head because forehead, five head. And so just got to give some warmth to it. So it's not just like one shade of like a big old canvas. <laughs> got to touch that up. Fun fact. I say fun fact all the time. None of these facts are that fun. But Andrew actually watched my YouTube videos before uh, we met. And he didn't realize that until maybe the second day after we met when he saw on my local Lonnie dorm, I put up a post-it note of like my Instagram and my YouTube. And he was like, oh, wait, I know you. <laughs> and it was because you discovered me from my Freer Hall dorm tour, which I need to film another because I forgot to put the kitchen in that video. And I realized it about a week after I uploaded it. I never used the kitchen though, because it's super small compared to the one in the Holly Aloha Towers. So right now I'm living in the same kind of dorm as I did last year, which is what we call a four by four, which means there are four rooms for four people. So I have my own like individual dorm room um, and I just share a private bathroom, meaning I share it with three other people um, instead of having like a communal floor bathroom. Freer Hall also has something called a two by four, which is two rooms for four people. So you're sharing like a room room with someone, basically putting another bed next to this bed Gotta keep touching this up and then pretend I know how to nose contour by just rubbing the brush on my nose. So, ooh, actually I just got a text from my roommate. She said, did the repairman come earlier today? Um, not that I noticed. <laughs> um, okay. Next job. Okay, we are almost done with this makeup routine. It's usually takes me around like 
15 to 20 minutes without like talking, but yeah. Fear Hall also has like individual suites. So you just have one room and then a bathroom to yourself. Obviously those are the most extensive dorms out of all of campus, but yeah. If I didn't live in Fear Hall, my second choice was actually um, Holly Wainani, I think, because that's like apartment style living. You have your own kitchen with like the three other people you share that dorm with. And, but obviously you share like a room room with someone. So two beds in one room, which is something that I've never done before. I've never shared a room with someone and I don't know if I could do it. Um, over summer, I got Holly look on. I got my room all to myself. Everyone did because of social distancing. But this semester is the first time in one year that they decided to put like roommates together. And so we're, the dorms are at full capacity, even overflow housing, which is um, Holly La Lima is full. Okay, what is next? Mm, more setting spray. So many whew, of the products I use are drugstore, including this one, because I am in college and cannot afford everything. This is actually a Marc Jacobs palette. And the only reason I have it is because Marc Jacobs Beauty is like on sale at Hella at <laughs> Sephora. What is next? Okay, so another cream product. This is just like a balmy highlighter. Um, quite a bit of like shimmer in this, but not like glitter, which is something I've learned to stay away from. I find that just putting like straight up glitter on my cheekbones is not that great, but putting something kind of shimmery adds a little glow from within. So yeah, I just put that there because I got oily skin because Asian don't raisin. Um, and the rest of my face will honestly start to match the highlighter in about an hour. So yeah, let's see. Okay, one more setting spray. This time a different setting spray. This is a Sephora brand. This setting spray lasts me through like happy hours. It lasts me through uh, like dinners, like all day beach days. The Sephora brand setting spray is so amazing. <laughs> I keep looking like I'm topless. I swear I'm wearing a tube top. I thrifted to this actually. That is something I'm learning, which is that just because you thrift something does not mean you're actually sustainable in your clothing shopping habits. Because I can thrift a bunch of stuff, but does that make me any more environmental? No, I need to learn to like the stuff that I've thrifted and to not keep shopping. So that way I'm not consistently buying stuff. And that's a clothing mindset I don't quite have yet. Honestly, with the way things are going with Andrew, I predict a retail therapy shopping disaster um, Friday. So <laughs> that'll be fun. We are almost done with my makeup routine. I basically just need to put on some like lip something. Because I wear a mask in my lecture today, the thing I'm gonna put on my lips is a tint that way it doesn't rub off on my mask and so but it keeps my lips like some color so this is the Aquarius Beauty lip oil tint and strawberry so yeah just like a little bit of color and watch this it doesn't transfer it doesn't transfer my mask at all either which is more than I can say for some of the other makeup on my face so yes and then one more time, just because my brows seem to like fly away, I'm going to get like this like clear mascara. Uh, it's the same one that your grandma uses, you know, that brand. And just like make sure to brush my tails a lot. Okay. So. I know earlier in this live, I start, I talked about me getting recognized on campus. But fun fact, people also know me for my dad's YouTube channel, which is a million movies. You can find it in like on my YouTube homepage if you click channels um, or like community and it's one of those listed up there. So yeah, my dad has a channel called a million movies. He talks about old movies, um, not a whole lot of contemporary movies, um, just because that's not, I mean, yeah, he's like obviously liking all movies, but I just grew up watching older movies with him. It made sense for him to talk about old movies to me. And yeah, 
last semester, I took a like intro to cinema class. It was like ACM like 350 or something, maybe 250. And literally one of the DMs I got was, hey, I watch your dad on YouTube, <laughs> which makes sense. It's a film class. Um, a lot of people in there were like film majors are part of the ACM, which stands for Academy of Creative Media here. So yeah, actually one of the first days of class, I did get a DM saying, I watch your YouTube channel. So ah! I like took a picture of that and I sent it to my sister and I was like, look. <laughs> but a comment I got on one of my most recent videos was, it's amazing how I've been able to kind of build a community with um, some of the people from YouTube. Uh, I think Mateo is one of the first people I think of. Uh, Mateo as to our food and life. Uh, he was also an orientation leader and he was in one of my group orientations like last year. That's how I first met him and followed him on Instagram. So yeah, but also like I do recognize like some of my own subscribers who can DM me on campus. The other day I ran into Johnny Gonzalez who has a YouTube channel too. And he's a freshman, he's on the like cheer team here. And we DM'd like a little bit back and forth over this past year, just like questions about UH. And I saw him at the dining hall and I was like, are you Johnny? <laughs> and it was him, so it wasn't awkward. <laughs> I've definitely gone up to people though before and thought they were someone that they weren't. Is my hair getting dry? Kind of. But yeah, it worked out. So I don't know. And something else that Andrew told me was he, it's like kind of admirable of like how helpful I want to be to other people who want to come to UH. I think I'm helpful to anyone. Um, I am an Uber driver for all of my friends. <laughs> but um, I definitely, like, on Instagram, I try to reply to a lot of people. If I didn't get to yours this summer, I'm so sorry. But I've been spending, I've been sending more voice memos to, like, people to try to, like, you know, make it better. Uh, reply to them, actually. <laughs> and so, yeah, he was, like, it's, like, nice how you actually, like, interact with them and, you know, like, reply. Because, like, duh, this isn't, like, a one-way thing where I say something on a soapbox and you listen. I like to listen to y'all. <laughs> no one wants to listen to me for that long, okay? There's a reason my family is okay with shipping me out to Hawaii, an island over 2,000 miles away from them. And so if I get to listen to you guys, that's better for everyone, especially me. Okay, time to drink some water. A video I'm trying to film later this week so I can upload it next week is what I eat in a day as a college student. Cause I've never shown a video about like the dining halls or anything on campus. And so I think that'd be kind of fun showing uh, like my meal plan and explain the meal plans, showing which campus food courts I like to go to, or maybe I might eat off campus for dinner because I really like Ripple Smiles. So yeah, I think that's a video I might do later. And I'll also like, I'll talk you guys through my cooking, which is basically making a protein shake or uh, <laughs> literally this is all I can do is just put stuff together into a cup and shake it. I mean, I'm not joking about that. I think I could like, I don't know. I think I could burn water if I tried to like boil it. The joke with one of my friends back home was always that I would lose an oven <laughs> if I tried to cook. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I, literally the only thing I really like make in my like kitchen or dorm is protein shakes or um, I, I've been doing a colon cleanse the past two weeks just because I have been a little bit bloated. And so again, putting a powder into a water and shaking it up. My roommates this year and last year were both much more um, kitchen cooking vibes than I was. Like this year, one of them has like, uh, she makes bagels every morning and like cooks. Last year, one of them had an air fryer. <laughs> and then, like, Emily would, like, make cakes in the kitchen and stuff all the time. But, yeah. Mm. 
So I am going to log off soon. Um, one more hit of the setting spray. Can never do too much. Cool. I hope that this was kind of enjoyable. If you can, please donate using the link in the description box. And if there's, I mean, you guys know how to contact me. Instagram DMs. If you don't have an Instagram account, I do apply, or I reply to a lot of YouTube comments. Sometimes I don't because I'm not always on my YouTube studio app, to be honest. <laughs> um, so, of course, if you have any questions about UH, hit me up. If you have questions about my life, which no one usually does, <laughs> don't worry. So, that's the end of this. I've been saying that for like three minutes. This is the end. Please donate using the link in the description box. And again, it's for the cakey, for the kids. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Mahalo. Thank you for watching.